Hi, this is Ty Hyderali. I'm a plaintiff's lawyer. We concentrate in employment law in New Jersey and New York. So a very interesting case uh, came out of the Third Circuit, October 8th, so pretty recent, uh, called Wolfslayer versus Driscoll. And in this case, uh, it really discusses the issue of, listen, if you uh, bring to your fellow employees' attention that there are certain risks in the workplace, such as uh, there might be the risk of exposure to COVID-19, are you protected? And what happened in this case was Mr. Driscoll, who's the director of facilities at the Indiana University State of Pennsylvania, uh, basically became aware that a colleague's wife uh, was on the campus and had COVID-19. And what Mr. Driscoll wanted to do, I'm sorry, what Mr. Wolfslayer wanted to do was he wanted to inform his fellow employees that listen, you know, you might want to be careful uh, and protect yourselves and possibly self-quarantine because there might be the risk of exposure to COVID-19. Well, President Driscoll, the president of the university, wasn't too uh, keen on that idea. And uh, several members of management of the university uh, tried to um, uh, detract and derail Mr. A wool slayer from sharing this information with others. And they counseled him, don't do it, it's not necessary, etc. Well, Mr. Uh, wool slayer decided that no, he wanted to make sure that other employees at least had knowledge about this potential exposure issue. And so he sent an email um, out to his fellow employees informing them of the potential threat in the situation. Well, uh, President Driscoll was not uh, terribly pleased with uh, Mr. Will Slayer's decision, and he ended up um, terminating it. All right, what happens next? Uh, the lawsuit is filed, and uh, the case that comes before the court is, did Mr. Will Slayer engage in protected speech in basically uh, sharing with people this information about uh, the COVID threat. And uh, uh, Driscoll filed a motion to dismiss on separate grounds, but the ones that are really interesting is, number one, was this a matter of public concern or was uh, Mr. Will Slayer speaking as an employee, was he speaking as an employee or as a citizen? If it was an employee, bad, citizen, good. So basically, the court looked at that issue and they said, well, we understand that Mr. Wolfslayer used the uh, university's computers. Uh, however, that doesn't necessarily mean that just because he's using the computers and his, and his uh, employee email account, that this is not uh, in, the, in the interest of an employee as opposed to a citizen. Because the court said, well, wait a second, what is Mr. Wolfslayer's duties? Right? What are his duties as director of facilities? Well, it wasn't what he did. So the court said no issue with regard to um, what uh, President Driscoll put on the table to try to throw the case out insofar as they found that Mr. Wolfslayer, when he made the complaint, was speaking as a citizen and it was a matter of public concern. With regard to the public concern, the second issue, the court said, come on, you know, uh, He's, he's trying to bring to, the, uh, to his fellow employees' attention the risk of COVID. And certainly the pandemic magnifies the issue that this is a matter of public concern. And so certainly they said no issue with regard to Mr. Wolfslay being protected by uh, the Constitution with regard to his freedom of expression, First Amendment rights. Uh, there was another issue that was also thrown out there as far as uh, what's called uh, immunity, um, and the court uh, set that aside and said immunity doesn't exist for various reasons, such as a continuing violation and the relief that was sought. But the interesting part of the case is, uh, you know, if you're an employee and you hear that there's um, the risk of exposure of threats to your fellow employees and you work for the state, you have protections. This is Ty Hyderali. Be safe and be well.